Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, we are making a Happy New Year giant sign to display for your New Year's celebrations. I can't believe how quickly 2023 has gone and we're almost into 2024. It's been so much fun sharing all of the craft projects with you this year and I hope you stick around to see what fun I've got in store for next year. But for now, we are getting ready to bring in the new year with this giant sign, so let's find out how to make it. You can download the free cutting file for this project at craftwithsarah.com forward slash free dash SVGs or follow the link in the description of this video to go straight to the download page. The download comes in a zip folder and you need to unzip this before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, it's time to get the SVG file into Cricut Design Space. Open up Design Space and start a new project and then go into Upload over on the left and then Upload Image. You can then either click Browse to find the file on your computer or drag and drop it in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of your folder and then the file to select is the one which starts SVG in the file name. I'll click and drag that in and this is what it should look like with all the pieces one on top of the other. Go ahead and press upload and then it will appear in your recent upload so you can click it to get the green border and then press add to canvas. It might take a little while to load as it is a big file. Now it comes in, it's just under 26 inches wide. You can change it to 26 if you want it to be an exact number, but it doesn't really matter. And you can kind of see here how it's split up into the different segments where all these lines are. But if you look down the bottom of the layers panel, scroll all the way down, then you can start to see this is how we can cut something so big on a regular sized Cricut mat because all of the really big bits come split up into different pieces. At 26 inches wide, the pieces are small enough to be cut on 12 by 12 inch cardstock or A4 cardstock. However, some of them are still a little bit big to be able to cut on US letter paper. If you want to use US letter sized card, then resize the width down to 24 inches and make sure that padlock is closed when you resize so that the height changes too. And by doing that, it means it will fit on your US letter paper. But I'm doing it on A4, so I'm going to put it back to 26. Now the design comes with a 2024 on the balloon. If you're watching this video, uh, in a different year, <laughs> so maybe not this year, and you want to change that number, all you need to do is look down the layers panel until you find that 2024. I think I've probably gone past it. Yeah, here it is. And then hide it by clicking the little I next to it. And then you can go into text, type out the year you want to add, Choose the font, whatever font you want. I'm just going to keep it as the default for now. Oops, I just dragged it into there by mistake. I didn't mean to do that. There we go. Um, so then you can change the font to anything you want. Let's just go for that one just to show you. And then change the colour. And then you could use that instead. But again, I'm doing this just as it comes. So let's put it back to 2024 by hitting the undo button a few times. A few more times. There we go. All right, so this is ready for me to cut. And to make this super firework inspired, I'm going to cut as much as I can from either holographic or shiny or glitter card to really make these colors come to life. When you're ready to cut it out, press make on the top right and that will separate out all the layers. You can change the paper size in the drop down here and you can see that's now changed all of those white pieces. If you want to, you can move things about by clicking and dragging 
And this can help you to save some space on your cardstock. For example, if I cut all those shapes up there, it means I'll have this area at the bottom of my piece of card that I can use on another project another day. You do need to change the size for every single colour. So just go through and change them, get everything looking how you want it to, and then press continue to connect to your Cricut machine and follow the on-screen instructions to get everything cut out from your cardstock. Here's my giant sign or cut out and I've roughly laid everything in place just to check I'm happy with all the colours um, and it's looking great. It is slightly too big to fit in my camera view so we're going to have to make this a little bit step by step so that you can still see everything. But to start with, now I know that I'm happy with everything, I'm going to move all of the colours and little pieces away until I'm just left with my background. Alright, so here we go. It's a bit hard to see, but I'm now left with my six dark blue sections. And also these two glittery sparkly bits, which are going to go behind two of the sections. So um, before we do anything else... I think I'm going to stick those in place. So grab your left hand side piece, which is the one with all the stars, turn it upside down and grab some glue. And then just work out roughly where this is going to go. It lines up along the top. So you won't end up covering the two little shape cutouts. Now putting this in place, making sure it doesn't overlap any of the sides. That's so pretty. <laughs> and we've got one on the other side too, which is the green firework. So I'll turn that one upside down. Just check where this is going to go along that top bit and we'll glue this into place too. And then line it up and stick down. All right, so now we can start sticking this part together. We've got six pieces overall. It's going to be a bit hard to show you because I can't zoom out anymore on my camera. But what you want to do is put these all in place so that the shapes, we've got squares and circles and triangles, so that they all overlap with each other and that's how you'll know that they are correctly placed. You can also use the edge, the outline on some of the pieces. I'm not doing this very straight on my camera. <laughs> Let's try and move it along a bit so you can see better. Okay, this one isn't quite lining up, which makes me think that's not straight. And potentially that one's not straight either. There we go. Now that I've got them all in place, I use some washi tape to stick it to my work surface, just so that as I'm gluing bits together, it's not all going to move out of place. If you've got washi tape or painter's tape, masking tape, it's a good idea to do this. Just make sure whatever tape you use isn't going to damage your cardstock when you take it off. All right, they're all tacked into place apart from this one. I use this one to stick first. Grab your glue and we're going to go down these two sides, but no further than when the end of these cutouts appears. We don't want to be able to see the glue when we're done. So it's just going down there and along here. And 
next I'll do this one I'm trying to move it without anything else moving because everything else is where it's supposed to be and this time I can glue along here and down here definitely just moved everything then <laughs> I could also glue down here at the same time. Get loads of sides done together. I actually went out a little bit too far with my glue on that one, but that doesn't matter. It'll get covered up in a minute with the other layers. Here's that one. Two left. Actually, one left because I've glued this line already. Then put my glue down here and here. Line up those shapes and get it stuck down. Okay, so that should be all my pieces stuck, but because this is such a big, big sign, I will also add some sticky tape on the back along all those join lines to really secure them in place. But I can't do that until my glue has fully dried, otherwise things will start moving about and shifting when I try and turn it over. So I'm gonna pause my recording, wait for this to dry fully, and then turn it over and show you how to do the tape. My glue's all pretty much dry now and I took the opportunity while it was drying to raise my camera up a little bit so now we can see the whole sign just about. Okay, so turn this over. There we go. And then along all of the join lines where the card meets itself, add some sticky tape. There's the tape. Now turn it back over so that we've got the nice side facing. And the next layer to add is the one that will make up the next section. So you can roughly line this up. Although first, if you're adding twine or um, ribbon to your sign, then we want to add that in first. Um, I don't have my twine with me. I happen to have some red ribbon on my desk. So uh, we'll use that, assuming I've got some scissors, which I do. Super organized today. Right, I'm gonna run that a bit longer than I would probably need it. It's much easier to cut it shorter. And then for this one, I think we probably want to feed the ribbon in from the back. Like that. And then that will tie behind. So you'll see the little bits of ribbon poking up like that, but it should be covered up by the other layers. I'll just tie a little bow in here for now to keep it secure, but um, I probably would cut that shorter when we're done. And let's secure this in place with a bit more tape. Oh, look, I've got it all twisted. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's all right. My knots come apart anyway. Let's untwist it. Nice and flat. Just a bit more tape. There. Right. On to the next bit. So we've got stars, which will go up there. There we go. I'm using these little triangles to know where to put it. And that will cover up some of my ribbon. Balloon. You 
an easy assembly guide to um, really get this in place. And I think I'm doing this. This is the wrong one, I think. I want this one. Do I? Oh dear, I'm getting myself all confused. <laughs> no, I think that is the top one. I was right the first time and I just moved it all the way again. So yes, I strongly recommend following the assembly guide. I can't do that because I haven't created it yet because I make them after I record the videos. Uh, so yes, that's why I'm slightly getting myself in a muddle. So now I've got those roughly in place so I know where they need to go. I'm going to get them all lined up nicely along the little where the holes are. And it's nice because you can line it up with the holes in the blue so you know where everything's going to go. But I'm not going to glue this down yet because I want to stick it on with foam squares to give it some dimension. So instead I will just tack some of these down with my washi tape again when I know they're in position and then glue the bits together one at a time when they're all where they should be. Um, why don't you just start with the gluing? Why not? <laughs> And this shiny green just needs to line up here. Make sure you don't get any glue on the blue. We're not sticking it to the blue yet. We're just um, sticking the pieces of this layer together. Perfect. All right. So once again, all this needs to dry, then I can turn it upside down and add my sticky tape to the join lines. This is my piece all turned over. I've added the sticky tape down all the join lines. Now I can add my foam squares. You can either use foam squares which come in a pack like this, or um, you can use tape on a roll, foam tape, if um, you think that will be easier. I've got some, I haven't used this before, so I'm going to give it a go. I kind of have a feeling I'm going to end up using more with it being on a roll than um, if I was just using the squares. But we'll give it a try and see if I can get into the packaging. That wasn't very helpful, was it? Right. I have a feeling this is going to destroy my scissors. It in pieces because I don't need to go the whole way along but definitely some nice big pieces and if you're using um, the tape just make sure you still put bits in the middle of all the pieces we really need the stability um, from having it go into all the little bits and I'll also use my normal squares to go into some of the smaller areas just to make sure there's tape in there too Hopefully my foam squares are about the same height as uh, <laughs> this tape. Now be a bit careful on this balloon because my ribbon will go out the top of it so I don't want to put foam down this bit here. And the same on whichever one of those stars will be covering up, I can't quite remember. Um, so that's, I think that's okay for the tape. But I'll add some of my squares in the smaller bits. Some of these bits in this firework are really small. So I'll add even smaller foam squares. But of course, if you've only got the bigger ones, you can cut them smaller to fit into these gaps.
Right, I'm not entirely sure that was any quicker, but we'll see. Now I can peel all the tops off to reveal the stickiness underneath. Right, that is all peeled off. So it's <laughs> done this the right way around. And line it up. So we've got these shapes here to know where it's gonna go. Be a bit careful because I was here so sticky. Get those vaguely in place. And I'm just gently lying it down. I'm not dropping it down fully yet, just in case I don't quite get it right. But that's looking pretty good. And this design is quite forgiving if you need to move it about. Um, but also quite forgiving in that if it's not exactly lined up, it still works. Still looks right. <laughs> So you see, I've not, uh, she can't see because it's not on screen. I've not quite got it straight along the bottom, but I think that's okay. Still going to look lovely. Put these down. Get my ribbon. Okay. Whew, hard is bit done. Now it's time to add a few of the detail bits on top, starting with the starry bit, which goes on here. And this can just be glued on nice and easy. Then we've got the second bit of the firework to go on this side. And I'm going to foam this on with my teeny tiny foam squares, but you could glue it if you prefer. You can use the shapes underneath to know where to put it. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, next I'm gonna move on to the final big piece. And I have cheated a little bit because I've already stuck it together. It's all these pieces of white. And to stick it together, I did just the same as when we did this one. I led all the pieces on the design to make sure they were in the right place and just stuck them together one at a time. So all I need to do now is add my sticky tape on the back and then add some bits of foam tape on here because this one will be stuck on with some more foam. Here's all my foam added, and you can see my sticky tape as well. And then I'll put this on. I should have been a bit more careful up here because I don't want the foam to go over where I've already got the foam here, otherwise the height won't be right. So I'm just gonna put that on there instead. And I was very quiet then and concentrating. Okay. There, lovely. So that gives an extra bit of depth up from those bottom fireworks. And now we can start thinking about adding the text. I strongly recommend getting everything in place before sticking it down, just to make sure everything's spelled correctly and in the right places. Because once you've started sticking, it's then very difficult to uh, correct if you need to. The stars make some of them pretty easy to line up. And also we've got the balloon on there. Okay. Happy New Year. Fabulous. 
All right, time to get out my foam squares and start sticking these on. So just a few foam squares. I'll show you in a minute. I know you can't see right now. I've just got four bits on there and one in the middle. Take off the backing again. I'm sorry you can't see. <laughs> this project is just too big. And then stick it down. I'm going to move it along a little bit so it covers that join line there. And then I'm just going to pause this video and do exactly the same for all of the other letters. And then we'll come back and finish the rest of the sign. Here's my sign with all my letters stuck on with foam squares. And I've also stuck on all of the additional stars too. Um, so we've got the pink one here with an extra bit of foam. Two little ones here, white and orange. And then all the stars that go along the green explosion at the top. Then we've got a gold one and a pink one. Over on this side, running out of room again. <laughs> There is a red one, a white one, and finally the orange one on top of the Happy New Year. The only thing I've got left to do is the balloon. And we'll start with the solid piece, which I'll add some foam to. My scissors have definitely got gunked up with this tape. I'm going to have to clean them. So overall, whilst it might have been a little bit quicker to use the tape, I think from now on I'm going to go back to my regular foam squares because they don't destroy my lovely scissors. Right, that one on there. Then the next piece will be glued. Where's my glue? Here's my glue. Fits right on top. So you can see the little polka dots through. And then finally, I've got my 2024, which I'll also glue. I'm not going to do the glue holding it over the sign, as this is a little bit narrow. I don't want to spin any. There, just a gentle tap down so the glue doesn't smush out. And that is my giant Happy New Year sign. All finished. Just look at all the sparkle. You can see my camera. That's looking amazing and that'll be great hung up for my New Year celebrations at the end of the year. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a giant off the mat Happy New Year sign. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more papercraft projects and cricket fun. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!